So I'm getting my specialized stump jumper ready to go to a gig. So putting all my tools on the rear rack, I'm gonna put my camera onto the Velo Orange bars and utility rack, use my infinity tools to hold it on there. You guys have seen this all before, so nothing new. This video is gonna have, I think at least four different bikes in it, but a trigger warning for some of you, cause you needed apparently about 20, 30 of the miles in the 200 miles in this video will be on an e-bike. So try and calm down. You're big, you're big, you're big people, you're grownups. You'll get through that little part. Warm weather is popping out the green. I love it. I absolutely love it. This little setup is so great. I was just thinking, I wonder if I can make these bars work on the e-bike. That bike doesn't have a way to set up a front rack or basket. These would be perfect for it. Anyways, we're gonna talk about some things, but first I'm gonna throw it back to the Cherry Blossom Festival and dinner party ride. I'll talk to you about other things a bit later. So here's the thing that is ironic about me taking out the e-bike today. I don't need the e-bike. I just want to go for a ride, but it already had my tools on it. So I haven't even turned the power on, but I only will to get up the hills. And I only needed to get up the hills because the e-bike is heavier than my bike. <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny to me. It doesn't have to be funny to you. You're allowed to find whatever you want to find funny funny. So these are all little lanterns that'll be lit later for the Cherry Blossom Festival. It's gonna be packed full of people and hard to ride through here because of the festival, but that's what I'm doing, taking pictures. On your left. On your left. So the Cherry Blossom Festival has been going on for a number of years now. This year it was by far the biggest though, and there was a great turnout. They also finally hit the timing on the head where the blossoms were all, you know, very in bloom. You know, there's always a little bit of a variable there because the weather, obviously. So yeah, it was cool to see people out. I know some people are gonna look at this and be like, well, you couldn't ride the bike path like you said, and that's annoying. No, I would rather see thousands of people turn out downtown Akron. I've got plenty of other routes to ride. And again, like I was kind of basically on this day, wanted to take some photos. Then I was pretty much just tooling around before heading over to my friend who lives downtown for dinner. So I was making a loop, getting my photos. I wasn't out to get like a serious ride in. And if I was, I would have went a different way. And even on the way back here, I just rode down Main Street instead of working my way back through the towpath. So like I said, if you watch the other videos, one of the cool things about this e-bike that I'm riding, and again, there'll be a full review coming up with all the specs and all the kind of stuff you want to know, but is that it's totally rideable without the pad pedal assist on. What I found myself doing on this day when I came back down Main Street is when I'd come to a red light, I would kick the power on as I stopped. So when I started up at that light, being that the bike is heavier, I would have that little boost at the light. And then when I was up to speed, I would turn it back off. So it was kind of this fun little, you know, cheat to get up to speed. But again, that's what I was saying earlier in the video is like riding the bike when I don't need it, just because I already had it loaded with my tools and stuff on this day and just wanted to walk out the door. I'm kicking on the power to go up hills and stuff like that. But the reason I need to do that is because I'm riding an e-bike with a battery and a motor on it and all that. Whatever. Not the way other people are going to ride an e-bike, but it's the way I was riding it on this day. So I wasn't working for anyone on this day. I just decided to go out and take some photos for myself. Um, I still do that once in a while, <laughs> but yeah, I was happy with what I got. Then I went over to my buddy Ryan's. He was having a little dinner party. He had brought some port back from when he was in Europe and we had some different stuff to compare. So a little bit of a tasting and they had great food and just a hangout and 
a non-bike situation with bike people. Of course, I still made it a bike thing because I rode there, obviously. But yeah, this next ride was another one of our little explore wanderer routes where we use wanderer and just try and hit different roads we've never done before. So this was another one Aaron had planned. We were going out to Ken again and we just hit more you know, farther out roads, different neighborhoods, a couple country roads on our way, just to keep mixing it up. I really, I keep talking about this app, but I just think it's a lot of fun. You know, as I mentioned a lot of times this winter, you get boring to ride the same things over and over again. So to force yourself to find new things, it's really cool. So it's just, I think it's wanderer.com. I'll link it down below. I always, everyone always asks and I always forget to do that. So I'll make sure I have a link if you want to check it out. I have no affiliation with them. I actually use the paid version. I just think it's something that is really cool and it's something that I enjoy using. Uh, and so does Aaron. So we just try and fill in our map. It's one of those things where we've been going down all those dead ends and I would love to, the idea of getting almost all of Akron or something like that, you know, all of your city, Cuyahoga Falls, actually in my case. So as I've always said, I'm surprised by the overwhelming positivity on this channel with the community and the comments and everything like that. It's very unusual, I think, for YouTube. People just love to attack and drag people down. And I mean, you get the normal trolls and all that, but that's no big deal, a troll's a troll. I am so surprised though, by some of the comments about the e-bike. It's just so weird to me that certain cyclists just have in mind that the way they do things is the only way to do things. I've talked about this in other aspects of cycling with it being certain people in the mountain bike community or the road bike community looking down on everyone else. And again, it doesn't mean everybody. When I say something, you don't have to take everything personally. I'm talking to a broad, broad spectrum. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting that all of a sudden everybody seems to know what's best for everybody else. When it comes to the e-bikes too, like so many people are so positive about it. Like, hey, I don't need one, but I'm glad they're there for when I will need one. Oh, I never thought about the bike infrastructure thing. Yeah, more people on bikes means more infrastructure, blah, blah, blah. So overwhelmingly positive. And a lot of people were really happy that I posted it because they were people who have been injured or people who are older who ride e-bikes or just people who have replaced a car with an e-bike. They still own regular bikes, just like me. They're just making less car trips because of the e-bike. But some people like talk about their personal situation. Well, I ride a bike and it got me in shape and I don't want other people not to have that opportunity. One, you are not anybody else's health coach. It's not your responsible responsibility to worry about how other people get their exercise. <laughs> There's no other sport where people would say something like this. Runners don't go out on runs and be like, oh, do you know Tom drove his car to work last week? <laughs> Who cares? Like, and again, this is the one that people got really mad when I responded in some of the comments with my opinion, and I stand by it. I said, the idea of thinking of bikes as just workout machines is elitist, classist, but at the least, ignorant. The idea that bikes, and that's what everyone uses bikes for, is a workout machine is crazy. It's especially crazy if you're saying it like the elitist thing. If you are riding some high-end carbon bike and wearing $300 worth of kit, and then you're like, you know, this is the way bikes should be used. E-bikes are lame. And not realizing most of the world uses bikes to commute and get places on. And a lot of other people use them for fun. The smallest portion of bike use is for getting a workout. So you just need to broaden your perspective and realize that that's not what bikes are about in general to most people. And even more so that most of the people, most, not all of the people typing this stuff, drive a car and work a nine to five job and they drive their car to work and home from work and grocery shop in their car. So then to sit here and lecture somebody about their workout, you know, when they're driving a car everywhere. Also, a lot of people did comment or some, not a lot, the majority, like I said, were positive, but some about the environmental impact of e-bikes being a little more disposable, parts being harder to work on. Uh, you could also talk about labor issues, the chemicals in the batteries, all that stuff is true. And it goes the same, I would say, with the people who are driving a car everywhere and then complaining about like people not getting health benefits of bikes. It's unless you're living some super green life, you are picking the wrong thing to pick on. Um, Think about it. Look around your house. Is there a big air condition out behind your house? Uh, again, are you driving a car almost everywhere? I'm sure you have an iPhone. I'm sure you have a big TV. So you have a refrigerator. Like, so to pick out of all the things, yes, if you look at e-bikes and the e-bike industry specifically, you could find a lot of things about it that are problematic. If you look at it in the gra grand scheme of our capitalist society and all the stuff that you own and the consumerism, 
you're picking the wrong thing, you know, because in general, an e-bike is always better. The worst e-bike is better than the best car. So just try and keep that in mind too. So again, I know some of you might be living this like really great life and this really perfect life where you're trying to do everything awesome, but most of you who are typing that or not, you're living a normal life and then you're just trying to find a reason to hate on something. It's so strange to me. I don't understand it, but why don't we drop it? Why don't you stop? Why don't you just really broaden your horizons yeah. a little bit and realize don't who cares what someone I rides do. or their form of transportation. Again, when you compare it to like a place like the Netherlands, people aren't riding their bikes there to get a workout. People aren't riding their bikes there even to really save the environment. It's the most efficient way to get around. That's the way they've set up their society. So people do it. Rich people do it. Poor people do it. Middle class people do it. It's like Switzerland. People don't take the trains because they love trains. Trains are the most efficient way to get around. You go to a train station, you don't have to look at a schedule there because the trains run so regularly and often. It's like the subways in New York City or anything oh, like that. Anyways, on this ride, we ran into three <laughs> different groups of friends, which is so cool. Um, Ran two friends coming back from Kent. We were following our other friends who were on their way out to Kent. Ended up meeting up with a couple people like Brad and riding with him for a while. He broke off from his group and rode with ours. So this is one of the things I just love more and more about <laughs> our bike community out here um, in Northeast Ohio is there's just so many people out riding. You could go out for a ride on a random weekend and just start to run into people and have a good time. Good job. So I'm riding the e-bike to my parents' house for dinner. I want everyone in my family to be able to try it out. Um, I probably won't use any power or much power at all on the way there because I dropped down into the valley. Um, probably use it more on the way home because I got to climb. The wind is brutal right now, but I think it's in my favor. And also it might storm. It's actually looking a little iffy now, so if I have to bomb home through the rain and up the hills I'll probably have pedal assist on full power and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Just an FYI when I do the review I'm not gonna do all the tests to see like how long the battery actually lasts. I'm gonna use the other reviews for that. There's good channels that do it because I'm never gonna run the power the full time. I'm riding right now on the flattish towpath at 16 miles an hour with no pedal assist. So I'm not going to run the power just to run it. It's kind of funny. The fact that it's a lighter bike means the range is limited because it doesn't have a giant battery. But to me, it extends the range because I can ride it without the power on. So kind of an interesting trade off. To all the people who are saying, I shouldn't ride an e-bike or you won't watch the channel. I just rode five miles at 15 miles per hour with no power, so on a 40 pound bike. So I did take the bike over to my family on this night. And again, this is a time where I would have been driving if it wasn't for the bike, because I had the time on the way out, but I needed to get home. So yeah, and everybody who rode it just thought it was a lot of fun. Nobody commented on the fact that um, I was cheating. <laughs> Anyways, like my dad said when he rode it, he's like, man, it's so cool. I'm still riding a bike. I'm just going faster. I'm still riding a bike and getting exercise. The hills have just become easier. To me, that's the cool thing a lot of times about riding the bike. The bugs are out. I wish I had my clear glasses. So on this day, me and Aaron went for a little mixed gravel ride, also doing some new routes. It was a Monday afternoon. The weather was really nice. The weather was gonna be garbage the rest of the week, which it has been. So we decided to cut out, get a little ride in and, you know, get uh, do our work schedules around the chance to have some nice weather. So yeah, did a little bit of off-road industrial gravel. I wanted to show Aaron up here. This is where the new Rubber City Heritage Trail will be going in. Couldn't show her all of it because they were actually working on it while we were riding. So one last note before we go, I just said my whole goal with this channel is pr to promote positivity. I like people getting oh, out on bikes, good. people getting more out on bikes, people feeling comfortable on bikes and just showing the broad spectrum of cycling because I that? love every kind of cycling. I don't do every kind of cycling, but I appreciate them all. So yeah, so when someone in the comments, if you come at me with something mean or you disparage a whole group of people, yeah, I'm going to come back and respond with my opinion. So that's just how it is. I don't 
make my living off this channel. I could say what I want. Anyways, let's wrap it up with a happy thought and these cute pictures of Edmund with my new camera. More on that to come in future videos. Thanks as always for watching. Peace.